Welcome to United Prayer International, the Opera Room. We are so excited because it looks like every time we have a program, it gets better and better and better. And, you know, we are experiencing a touch of revival because we've been praying 24 hours through for 30 days. I want to remind you, this is no small thing. I want to remind you that collectively, we are praying around the world about 600,000 hours for 30 days. Assuming that everybody prays in the morning, you know, that's another hour. So collectively, we are praying a million two hundred thousand hours for 30 days. My God, something's going to happen. The law of cause and effect, something's going to happen. Miracles are going to happen. Signs and wonders are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so we're so glad that you're tuning in with us. So we are experiencing a type of revival because of this we're coming against the, 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 the coronavirus and those of them that have been affected by the coronavirus. We are also praying for our president and our government. We are praying for first responders, for our communities. And we're also praying, you know, for our founders. We're praying for our elders, our leaders, multi-regionals. And uh, we're praying for all the core ministries in Victory Outreach. It is so exciting to know that God uses prayer to make a difference, amen? And because of that, we have hope. F faith over fear, praise the Lord, amen. So we have a scripture, and I want to share, I, want, I have a, a scripture for us. Uh, but, you know, our, before I share the scripture, I want to say that our topic today is spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Spiritual warfare, and I know that some of you may be a little oblivious to that, maybe you don't understand, maybe we just got saved, and you say, what is spiritual warfare? Well, today... You're going to learn. I want you to go ahead and, and, and get any distractions out of the way and call somebody that you know that they need to hear about spiritual warfare. If people are being attacked in their finances, in their marriage, financially, uh, in, in, in their body, you know, if, if they're going through stress, I want you to call them up right now and have them tune in because God is going to move supernaturally. I believe the miracles are going to take place as a result of what God is going to do. Can't wait to let you know who's here with us. Praise the Lord. So um, our, founder has the, our founders have declared war against the powers of the devil. Listen, we have some radical founders. Sister Julie is radical. I'm telling you this. Pastor Sonny is radical, but Sister Julie, she's radical. Amen. She's really, really rock. She loves God and she loves people. And so she declared 30 days of prayer, 24 hours a day. We're praying all over the world. And because of that, we know that something major is going to take place. Our main objective in spiritual warfare is victory. Amen. No country declares war, uh, war against another country unless the objective is victory. Amen. So... Uh, and the Bible says, listen to this. The Bible says in Jeremiah 51, verse 20, you are my battle axe. This is what God is saying about you and me. You are my battle axe, my weapon of war. For with you, I will break nations in pieces, and with you, I will destroy kingdoms. You listen, we have the power. We have the power. Things are going to change in your life. Things are going to change in your church. Things are going to change in your family because we are going to intercede for you. We're going to pray for you. So we will be speaking about the reality of spiritual warfare. There, there, and the reason why I'm so excited about this because there's, uh, there, there are those that, that, that take spiritual warfare to an extreme. That, that There's a demon everywhere. We don't believe that. We, we're balanced. Amen. We're going to talk about that right now. Amen. So also we are, you know, we are going to engage for you in the area of spiritual warfare. We're going to pray for you and we're going to pray for your loved ones. Amen. So are you ready for a guest? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so excited. He's my pastor, my senior pastor of my mother church. None other than Pastor Sonny Argonzoni Jr. Amen. Hallelujah. Great Thank to be you. With you. <laughs> Thank you. I would shake your hand, but they say not yeah, to do that. Well, well we can we'll do, do this. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Augie, it's good to be with you. Go ahead. Oh, it is. It, um, I feel humble, to be honest with you, you know, to, to have you come and, and bless us with your presence. You know, you're full of uh, history. You know, there, there's a lot of 
maturity in, in you, and I know you fought a lot of battles. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about our Mother Church? How's our Mother Church? Mother doing? Church is doing good. Uh, we had started with a great year. Mm. The year looked really, really good. You know, 2020 vision, uh, everybody was optimistic. Uh, I was looking forward to Dodger Day, the first, <laughs> the first Dodger game. I had my tickets ready to Me go. Me too, the Dodger um, dogs. <laughs> and then everything just went shut down uh -huh. because of this virus. Mm -hmm. And the president calls it the unseen enemy. Mm. And I think we'll get into that a little bit more. But the Mother Church is doing well, actually, uh, through, through our broadcast that we're doing, uh, through the Internet. We're getting a lot of viewers, actually more viewers than we've ever had in the history of whenever wow. we started with the webcasting. Mm -hmm. So overall, the Mother Church is doing well. And I have some praise reports later on I'm going to share from the Mother Church. Mama Kim? She's, she's doing? doing great. She's doing great. We're, uh, we have two little ones at home, mm -hmm. uh, 12 and 10-year-old. And so they're doing homeschooling. And then my daughter, Brooklyn, uh, by the way, my kids' names, if you want to pray for them, I would love you to pray for my wife mm -hmm. every day. Pray for, pray for my sons, Cruz, the oldest is 19, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Jordan, by the way, is in the men's home. Mm, come on. He, he mm. got delivered a long time ago, mm. but he said, I want to stay. <laughs> he likes the men's home. He's 17 years old. He's going to uh -huh. graduate this year. Uh, and then we got Brooklyn, 15. She loves mm. the Lord. Uh, she's homeschooling, too. And then we got Tyler, 12. And we got Cody. He's 10. So we have a full house. Wow. And but God's taking care of us. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. What a powerful, uh, a, lot, a lot of arrows in the quiver. Yes. As they continue to grow, they're going to yes. develop, uh, you know, yes. into powerful That's another men thing. and women of God. Another thing with the little ones, too, the little league shut down. Like mm. that. There were two games in. Mm. And that's one of the joys I have to see my kids play. And uh, school shut down. They can't have a great regular graduation for Jordan. But yeah. God has this way of turning things around. Yes. Turn things around, and somehow there's going to be more light at the end of the tunnel than we feel right now that we're in. I believe yeah. that. I believe that. Mm -hmm. Well, I call Pastor Sonny Jr. my, my junior papa <laughs> and Sister Kim my junior mama. I love them. We pray for them. And, you know, as you know, I got saved uh, 43 years ago at our mother church. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I, I never went anywhere else other than our mother church. So I, I very much, very grateful for all the things that our mother church has done. You know, in the development of my wife and I and Victory Hours Eagle Rock. Yes. Uh, they had, there's a question I want to ask. Why should we pray for our top leaders? And something that maybe you may not know, you know, no matter where you are in the area of your spiritual walk with the Lord, I just want you to know that our leaders, they, they, get, they, they go through a lot of spiritual warfare. You know, somebody said the bigger the level, the bigger the devil, you know, the bigger the tax. But I want you to know that there's God's faithfulness, God's power covering as we pray for them. And so I want you to catch a little burden to continue to pray for our founders and our elders and, and, um, and all the top leaders that we have. So we have five reasons. I have five reasons that we should pray for our top leaders. And uh, Pastor Sonny Jr. is going to stand as a proxy, you know, for all the other uh, elders that we have. So Pastor Sonny Jr., uh, you, the reason why I feel that, you know, there may be some attacks, you know, that you get is because you are direct disciple of our founders. Not mm -hmm. only you, the son, but you have been disciple by Pastor Sonny yeah. and Sister Julie. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little yeah, bit well, about that? To pray for your leaders, is, of course, it's biblical, first yeah. of all. And even, even the, our, our president, the government, mm -hmm. to pray for them. It's very important. Um, but, yeah, just to be the son of the founder of this ministry was a big challenge, a big challenge. And, and when I think about it, um, I was always wondering, what am I going to be in the future? And I thought I was going to be a baseball player. Mm. But they prayed me, to get, prayed me in to get saved, first of all. Then uh, a lot of things happened after that. And I, I don't want to get into detail, but it, without their prayers, I would not be here today. And without the prayers that mm -hmm. you pray for us too, Augie, mm -hmm. I think a lot of us want to be here you. today. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, you know, so th this, I'm telling you, this is, you know, you're an inspiration to me, you know, because I, I come from Mexico City. When I came to Victory Arch, I couldn't speak the language. I couldn't speak mm -hmm. English nor Spanish. I couldn't read at 25 years old, wow. English nor Spanish. But every time I, I, you would share your story about you couldn't order pizza and all that, I mean, like, if God can use him, yeah. eventually God can use me, yeah. you know. And yeah. so you, all throughout the years, even wow. now, you become an inspiration to me and... Praise the Lord. Uh, there's also uh, 
something else that God allowed you to accomplish, and that was to pioneer, 1983, pioneer the gang. God's anointed in our generation. Mm. How did you get to that? That was, that was amazing, because I took over the youth. At that time, we called it youth, mm. Youth International. And I took it over two years prior to the 1991. I just got licensed to be a minister as an evangelist in 1990, actually, two years mm. after I got saved. Mm. That's how fast my dad was raising us up. And uh, I was preaching every word. Then he says, you know, we need to have a youth international leader. So I took that over. So two years later, 1993, I developed a message for the conference, for, for a conference. It was the same conference my dad started, United We Can. Mm -hmm. And the, the same, that same very conference, I did the youth service, a youth conference. And in the message I preached, I said, we're not the next generation. We're not the new generation. We're not, we're not just the, uh, you know, we are the now generation. Come on. Yes. And it's inspirational. Mm. The Spirit of God fell upon me, and it was a prophetic word, I felt. It came through me, and young people started standing to their feet, clapping. Wow. When they did, I couldn't get their attention weeks prior, prior mm. to that. <laughs> wow. But the anointing hit, and something kicked mm. in. A wave of a revival started, a yes. third, second wave of revival through the power of God, through the power of prayer. And... Uh, I would not even be, a, I thought I couldn't even preach in the first place when they got started doing it. Right. You know, six, six, 26 years prior to that, Pastor Sonny started the first wave, the yes. pioneers. Yes. And 26 years after you, yeah. you got, got used to the pioneer, we started this, uh, the, the, now what we call this third wave yeah. revival. Mm -hmm. It's like intermix of 26 years. Yeah. And we're expecting God to move in a special way within the next five years because Pastor Sonny's talking about. Uh, five years, positioning victory average in five years, and I believe that there's going to be a revival that could possibly surpass all the miracles and growth that we have seen in the previous 26 years. You also uh, are our founder, or not a founder, but you are the, the pastor of a mother church, the Chino, and uh, more, those are big shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a song by... It's a worldly song when I was in the 80s by Depeche Mode. Try walking in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I don't want to sing the whole song. But yeah, it it's, has uh -huh. been. But I've learned to walk in my own shoes. Wow. I've learned to walk Praise in the, the shoes that God gave me. Yes. And I've learned not to uh, be comparing to anybody or any, not even my father. I just know that he's the best. And so far? Yeah. yeah. Our mother church is the biggest church in the world. I mean, Victory Hours, within the Victory Hours. So I just thank God mm -hmm. that God is moving. I, 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 I got to be honest with you. Sometimes I, see, I look at your worship and I say, give me some of those voices. <laughs> give us some of those musicians. <laughs> They're coming. I, I think you're, you're, you're the champion in that area. Praise the Lord. Uh, also, you, you're an elder. I, I saw how God graced you with the responsibility of being an elder. And listen, the reason why we're bringing this out, because prayer, mm. we're talking about prayer, you know? And so all these uh, responsibilities that, that Pastor Sonny Jr. has, not only responsibilities, but along with the responsibilities, there's challenges that the enemy, mm. the enemy sometimes brings against them to make them ineffective. But God... You know, it's faithful, yes. and we're going to hear about that, about the victories uh, of uh, their lives as well. Also, you were not only just an elder, but also you were, you, you have formal training uh, in the area of academic. Mm -hmm. You went to LBI, LBI Latin American no. Institute? No, LIFE. Oh, LIFE. 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 LIFE Pacific College. That's right. And then you also went to Fuller. Yes. One of the best yeah. schools in the world. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, all of that packaged together, it makes you armed and dangerous, mm. you know. And I think that there's a reason why you ever get attacked. You know, you get attacked because, I mean, yeah. God's not going to attack somebody who's not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. But God attacks those of them that are in the front lines. And I can imagine every little step that you took yeah. to it, take care of this must have been a, 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 a lot of prayer behind it. Yeah. A lot of fasting behind it. A lot of it. And, and not only that. When I took over the church, the mm -hmm. mother church, that's when um, I was only 30 years old. 30 years old when, it, when we took it over. And that's the year when President George W. Bush mm. became the president. And his, he wanted to start a faith-based initiative, a faith-based initiative uh, thing. And he, he asked for Victory Hours to come. And it said Victory Hours, and it said gain. Mm. And, um, and then my dad says, they want you. And I says, no, they want you. <laughs> 
No, they want you. Amazing. And so he says, take the books, go to the, go over there, and be a part of that meeting. I was in a meeting with about mm -hmm. 30 ministers, mm -hmm. two, one Bo Buddhist, one, you know, different religions, but then uh -huh. most of them Christian. Mm -hmm. And I was there sitting by the president, and we were able to pray with the president. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Before we went out and signed, signed he signed out on the thing. I, I, so, I saw a picture. Yeah. I saw what a what a. Yeah. Th that was a White House, right? Yes. Amazing. And then what speed speed it forward, mm. uh, speed it up to now. Two weeks ago, I was on the phone with President Donald Trump, and, wow. and about ten thousand mm. ministers, and we were able to pray for him. And wow. so it's amazing how we're able to pray for our leaders of that stature. Mm -hmm. And I think pretty soon the president be, will be knocking on our door again because wow. what's going to happen after mm -hmm. this, and we're already seeing it happen, the epidemic for drugs is going to get worse. Hopefully not too bad, but most likely because of all this stuff, people losing jobs. But we're going to pray against that in just a few moments. Yes. We're going to pray against that yes. epidemic. And we're going to pray that we'll be a big part, a force, yes. to be able to annihilate that part of the mm. darkness. As a pastor of our, of our mother church, uh, you had to encounter a lot of spiritual opposition, but at the same time, I know you experienced a lot of victories because of the faithfulness of God in your life, the promises of God. Yeah. You're, you're a man of prayer, you're, you're, you, you, you love to, to, you are a man of, of, of faith, mm -hmm. you know, as well. And I've been watching through, you know, through the years how God uses you even in healings and miracles. And we're going to be praying for you in just a little bit. But I, you know, I just, you know, have some, some uh, comments and some questions that I want to ask you in regards to spiritual warfare. I remember you sharing one time how you took over a house mm -hmm. and, and, and all of a sudden the house, without no earthquake, began to actually shake. Yeah. Can you share with us yeah, a little bit about that? That's a, another good story, uh, good ending to the story. Um, but yeah, we moved into a house. My, my son Cruz was our firstborn. He was months old. Um, and Kim and I were laying down mm. on the bed looking up and talking to each other. Uh, we didn't even have the TV on. Mm. We were getting ready to go to bed. We weren't sleeping yet. And all of a sudden we see an image. I go, do you see that? It was a black image over us, like right there. And I go, and we just said, in the name of Jesus. And it wow. went out, it shot out, mm. and then the whole house shook. <laughs> so I wow. got up. I thought there was an intruder, and I got my mm -hmm. bat. Then I called my sister, Debbie, lived across the street. I go, Debbie, was that an earthquake? Was this, was this have an earthquake right now? She says, no, there's an earthquake. And so I got my bat, we got the baby, and then mm -hmm. down the street, my dad mm -hmm. lives uh -huh. at that time, or he still does. But we uh, went mm -hmm. over there, and I said, I knocked on the door, and he goes, he goes what's happened, what's happening? And he goes, I go, the house, our house shook, and I don't know what happened. And he goes, hey, Julie, it's happening to them now. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Welcome the, the pastor of Mother Church. Wow. I go, you didn't tell me if this is going to happen to me. But wow. yeah, I have another story. You want to hear another uh, one? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, there's another story. Um, they, they, these are things that they don't teach you in college. No, they don't. This mm -hmm. is stuff, you, you yes. know, this is called spiritual warfare. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm. The devil tries to intimidate. Mm. He tries to place fear upon yes. us. He tries to get you a fright, a frightened, and he tries to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And so what happened to me, I was, at times I was getting, uh, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I don't know if this ever happened to you, mm. where you feel like you can't breathe, and I couldn't even say Jesus at times. And so I would tap my wife in that same house, mm -hmm. tap my wife, and then I'd, and she would pray, and it would go away. But this time I was in San mm -hmm. Diego, wow. staying with my father mm -hmm. and mother when they were sure. pastoring there, uh -huh. I was preaching over there, and I was up talking to one of the guys till like three in the morning, or not three, yeah, about three in the morning. And then I remember distinctly looking at the clock. It was like 3.14 in the morning. Mm. And I was, couldn't breathe again. But this time my wife's not with me. So I couldn't tap nobody. I, was like, <gasps> I couldn't mm. breathe. And finally, I, it felt like forever, it lifted. Wow. And so the next day, I went, I was on my way home. I called my wife. I told her what happened. She, says, you, I, she, she goes, don't tell me. She was at 3.14 a.m., wow. I woke up to pray for you. Wow. And it, that's when it lifted. And what that tells mm. me, there's no distance in prayer. Yes. If God is able to mm. give you a picture of somebody. And, yes. and, that, and she, she's asleep. She could sleep. Mm. For her to wake up and pray for me at that hour, mm. that's, a, that's a miracle right there. I'll give you wow. one more. Yes. Okay? yes. I'm in Seattle. Yes. Preaching for Pastor Johnny up north. I mean, up uh, in Washington. And I took my little Tyler with me. Mm -hmm. At that time, he's like seven years old. And... Um, 
there's a lot of demonic activity there. Mm. I don't know if you've noticed what's happening up there. They yes. had uh -huh. Satanists surrounding yeah, the city. Yes. But yes. Though, this week they had mm. Satanists surrounding. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're doing what we're going to do, mm. but for Satan. Mm -hmm. I just saw that yesterday, the other day. So anyway, we're there. I'm in the hotel, and I was getting attacked again. Mm. But this time it was bad, bad dreams. And, and mm -hmm. literally, they felt like the devil was in the room. Mm. And I was going through And finally, I just I tapped Tyler. He's a little boy. I said, hey, can you just pray for me? He goes, OK, Dad. And he laid his hands on me. And a simple faith of a child wow. set me free that night. Wow. So I'm trying to give you different ways how God uses people. Yes, God can use anybody. At any age, any, at no distance. Yeah. Friends, he was seven years old, little Tyler. Mm -hmm. If God can use a seven-year-old boy, God can use you. Mm. You just have to trust God, yes. and you have to believe that God is greater. Listen, we're sharing these little stories, not to cast a fear upon you, no. but to let you know, you know that there is a, a real warfare, and there's a reason why God's given us the power. God given us weapons yes. that we can overpower the powers of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Pastor Senator Jr., you also had, you know, as a as an elder, you had you were attacked as an elder, as a as a husband, as a father. And so, but the reality of of God's faithfulness in your life super, su supersede uh, all the attacks of the enemy. Yeah. Right? That's right. God takes you through the storms, mm -hmm. takes you through the trials. In, in in life in general, there's peaks and there's valleys. There's times you feel like you're gonna die, and there's times you feel like you're gonna thrive. And uh, I love the thriving moments, but mm -hmm. you gotta endure yes. persecution. You gotta endure and persevere. Mm -hmm. And in the end, there's a reward. And so we're in the middle of one right now. We're gonna endure this yes. crisis, but yes. we're not gonna sit back and just take it. We're gonna attack back in the name of Jesus. Yes. I love, I, I love a, a message that you preached two weeks ago in mm -hmm. your church. That, and then in, in the message you shared about, uh, and I'm going to ask you to please read on this, uh, in Second Chronicles 20, uh, verse 15, where it says, the battle is the Lord's. Friends, th there, there yes. are times, you know, there are times, you know, that people may not have the strength to, to, to fight for their own. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, is that time that God takes, you know, over. Yeah. When you reach the end of yourself, then the battle belongs to the Lord. Can you share a little bit? And there, yeah, I'll you, share briefly. You, know, you have a scripture here. Yeah, that God is on your side. Okay, yes. God is on your side. King Jehoshaphat had enemies coming in, and instead of you know going to a sorcerer, going to other, he went to God, mm. and God told him, yes, you know, and, and he got on his knees and he he pleaded with God. Then he gets to this. It gets to this part right here, here. It says, where he says, "Listen, all you of Judah." and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. It's the and, Lord. Yes, and he goes on to say, position yourself. Position yourself. Position yourself for what? For this battle. In other words, <clears throat> just take your stand. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory. It's either a fight or a flight. We fight. Or we, we get we fearful, we get we cower. Mm. Right now we're fighting in the spiritual realm. Yes. Through prayer mm -hmm. and through praise. Praise confuses the enemy. That's what happened with the, the armies. Mm. They, they went in with this worship first. That's another group we've got to pray for, the Levites. The Levites went ahead and they began to sing, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And the enemies got confused and they attacked each other. Oof. And in the end, they, mm -hmm. they claimed all, all, all the, all the, all the, all the, all the spoil. All the spoil out, yeah. And then they were able to uh, prosper. Wow. So the Levites prosper. are the worshipers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the worshipers. So please pray mm -hmm. for the worshipers. I'm, I'm glad you brought that out. Uh, I, I, you know, listen, Christianity is not like a war. Christianity, it is a war. So, but it's a war that has already been won by Christ. We just have to live it out. Yes. You know, we have to get what happened in, at Calvary. We have to exercise it now. There, there is a uh, Pastor Sunday. I, I was reading uh, in college when I was going to uh, APU. We, we read uh, in many of the books that we read, we read about, about John of the Cross in the 16th century. Mm. And, uh, and so he wrote a poem called the, the Dark Side of the Soul. 
mm. of the night, the, yeah, the night side of the, of the soul. And in your message two weeks ago, you, you also shared that everybody has an evil day. It's like mm -hmm. you shared uh, on Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Yeah. You stand. Yeah. So when you come against, you know, against the powers of the enemy, you, you stand against the evil day. Yeah. The, the evil day, to my, to my knowledge, is that, is that when everything bad that can happen to you happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can you yeah. elaborate a little bit about that? Well, the Bible says, having done all, stand. Mm. After he talks about the armor of God, mm. and, and the armor is the key to spiritual warfare, the helmet of salvation. Mm. The shield of faith, of course, the breastplate of righteousness, the feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, uh, the sword of the spirit, and the shield, the faith is is not just to just to be a defensive mechanism. They would get together and they would push back yes. the enemy, and that's what we're doing mm -hmm. today, yes. and mm -hmm. that's what we're doing all over the world. We are taking that shield of faith with this sword, mm. the word of God, and we're pushing back darkness, the unseen enemy. See, even in this world, we can't see the devil. We can't see him, but he works through airwaves. He works through, he's the principality of the air. And, and we got to take authority in Jesus' name and yes. be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yes. Not in our own strength, not mm. in our own power. God is all powerful. And we have the power yes. of the Holy Spirit residing in us. Yes. We got to take authority and declare that we will have the victory. Yes. Everybody, everybody's got to have the, 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 the dark side of their soul, the night, the night. Of the soul, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's gonna go through uh, turmoil. Everybody's gonna go through things that, that, uh, you know, sometimes we don't we don't desire those things. But the Bible says that Jesus declared in this world, you're gonna be a you you're gonna Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome, but you will have tribulations. Just don't be fearful. I have overcome, and I just want you to know that if you're going through anything like that, such as stress because of this virus. Or you're going through phobias, or if you're going through maybe lack of finances, just want you to know that we're here to fight for you. You're not fighting by yourself. We're here to fight for you. Victory Outreach. We are a big army around the world, 37 countries around the world, and we are praying and praying and praying, and something good is going to happen to you. Listen, you need to expect it. Amen. That's right. So don't fight from your don't fight from your condition. Fight from your position. Yes. I say it again. Don't fight from your condition. Your condition could be weak. Your condition could be emotional. Your condition could be stressful. But fight from your position. Who do God say that you are? Mm -hmm. Listen to this. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's right. In the Lord, not in, in what you know, not in your skill set, but be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yes. There's another scripture, also Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. In the English Standard Version, it says, uh, He disarmed, no, oh, I love this scripture. Mm -hmm. It says, He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open Come shame. Come on now, yes. Open shame. By triumphing, he got conquered the devil and he triumphed over him and make an open spectacle of the enemy. <laughs> At the cross. Come on now. Listen, do you understand what it's saying? That God, Jesus made an open spectacle of the enemy. Wow. Yes. yes. You know, that, 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 you know, that's so, you know, like, it's heavy. You need to understand that. That the devil doesn't have any authority other than the authority we're given because of disobedience, lack of knowledge, or lack of faith. Mm -hmm. He moves on those three things. But outside of those three things, you have the power over the enemy. That's right. Praise yeah. the Lord. Well, Pastor, uh, go a, ahead. I want to share a story about go ahead. the prayer summit. Go ahead. Can we do that now? Yes, okay. yes, yes. The prayer summit we just mm -hmm. had in January. You were there. Mm -hmm. It was such a powerful time. It was, it was another setup mm -hmm. for what was to come. Um, and I had my dad scheduled to, to preach on the first night, on Friday night. Packed out. We had yes. a, a couple, almost 2,000 mm -hmm. people, I think, or more. And we had it packed out there. And my dad, he was getting ready to speak, and he came backstage, and he, he, he told them to get me out. And he says, you know, son, I, I don't think I can speak because of my sciatic nerve. He wow. had a sciatic, sciatic nerve issue in his back. And he, it goes all the way down. Those of you that ever had it, it's very painful. And so he said, maybe mm -hmm. you could speak. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll speak, but I think I could heal you right now. Mm. I go, there's such an atmosphere here right now. And, he, and I, go, I go, God can heal you, Dad. I go, let's just, let me just pray for you. And me and Ryan prayed, prayed for Pastor Ryan, for the gang. And we prayed, 
And then he, he, you know, he, instead of backing out, he stepped in, he stepped up. Mm. See, sometimes you can, when, yes. when you're going through stuff, you can either back down or step mm. up. Yes. You know, step up to the plate. He got out there. At first, you could see he was a little hesitant. He got out there. You could see the pain a little bit. But then, like two or three minutes in, mm. boom, we got into a flow. And that's a champion right there, in my yes. opinion. That's a yes. man. That's a warrior. That's a great warrior to step out and do that. And I want to show you a clip of that night. It's going to bless you because it's also challenging us in prayer. Yes. And, and this is good for you to get a buildup to get ready to pray because the word of God prepares your heart for the prayer to be powerful. Yes. Go ahead and watch this. Yes. I like Daniel said, I set my face. Daniel, if you want to know about prayer, get a hold of Daniel. I set my face unto the Lord. I set my face. Imagine, I'm going to set my face unto the Lord to seek him by prayer in supplication and in fasting. And I pray unto the Lord my God. Now that's heavy duty prayer. Imagine you coming here tonight and you say, I'm going to set my face. I want to set my face unto the Lord and seek him by prayer and in supplication and in fasting. And I pray unto the Lord my God. Hosea, the prophet lamented and said, There are none that calleth upon the name of the Lord that stir up himself to take hold of thee, O God. We need to seek God. Hear me now tonight. We need to seek God with fervency and intensity tonight. That's the type of prayer we need to seek God with fervency and intensity tonight. Wow. Wasn't that powerful? To see my dad at 80 years old not cower in fear. He, you know, he says, how could I, how could I let... He asked Ryan to speak too. Uh -huh. Maybe you could speak. How can I let my grandson, how can I let him speak for me? And I'm his discipler. I'm the man that was supposed to be of great faith and power. Y y yes. <laughs> I, I, I talked to him right after the sermon. Yeah, yeah. Right after and he, he, stayed till, he stayed too late. Too. Yes. It went away. I okay. talked to him right after that. He says, yeah, it didn't look too good if I'm, if I'm a man of faith and power, yeah. and then I'm, I'm sitting over here with somebody else taking my place. Yeah. You're talking about a man of faith and power? I mean, we're blessed mm -hmm. to our founders with such a great attributes. Praise the Lord. Well, we have uh, some praise reports. And these praise reports are going to pump your faith because we're going to believe for a miracle for you. Amen? Praise God. We have, uh, we have Brother Anthony from Victory Outreach Eagle Rock. And he'll probably be watching. Anthony Valdez, he got healed from coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I mean, God did a miracle in his life. Uh, and, and, you know, well, I think he was the first one in Victory Average, Pastor Sonny, when I shared with, I called you and I called Pastor Sonny uh, Senior and I called, you know, our multi-regional Pastor Joe. And, I, you know, just to be um, accountable. And he, Pastor Sonny says, I think you got the first one. And I'm thinking, oh, man, don't, don't tell me there's going to be a whole bunch of more. Yeah. But I tell you what, we started praying and he got healed. And we have possibly later on, we have little videos Maybe in the weeks to come of him, you know, being sick. And I have the documentation mm. when he was sick and also the documentation from the hospital that he's totally healed. And I thank God for you, Anthony. Praise the Lord. And, uh, people from China are getting healed, too. I have mm -hmm. a whole thing right here of different people. Just in the last week, we got healings. We mm. got praise reports. We got somebody that, got, that had only 30% of his heart was actually... Uh, actually functioning, but he got healed and he has 100% healed, healed. This young lady lost her job and then she came back. She, she actually she quit her job for two weeks to pray, and then she mm -hmm. got rehired and got a raise and a bonus of $500. I wow. mean, I could go on and on. I'm not going to say every one of them because there's so many. But even in Guadalajara, mm. they're they're having miracles there, and also yes. in Panama, yes. they're having an influx of people through social media, through this venue, through this medium that we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. People are viewing and people are getting saved. Mm -hmm. Even through the one that I do, fear, faith over fear, uh -huh. they're getting saved every single week. I was able to talk to Pastor um, Javier from in, in Panama, and uh, yeah, they're having a revival. People getting saved, people getting healed. 
Uh, social media is coming to another level. Mm -hmm. And I believe that at the end of this coronavirus, there's going to be a tremendous revival, both yes. in Panama and Guadalajara. Continue to pray for those bases that God has given us. Praise the Lord. And I think that now, you know, we have some prayer, prayer, prayer requests, you yes. know, that we have. And, uh, but I want to just share a scripture so that they can, you know, get us ready for this thing. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, with God, nothing is impossible. How many things? Nothing is impossible. With God, nothing. Listen, so no matter how you feel right now, God is able. No matter how the enemy is trying to work in your mind and your emotions, God is able, no matter what the enemy is saying about your marriage and about your job and about your future, the Bible says that nothing is impossible with God. So together, we're going to pray, we're going to fight, we're going to do spiritual warfare, man, yes. because we expect God to move and, and do miracles, signs, yes. and wonders. Praise the Lord. It's powerful. Well, Pastor, Pastor, we're going to be, we're going to pray, we're going to be praying, and maybe you can take the first one. Okay, Rachel, Rachel Yellow. Um, healing from a tumor in the head and all side effects. She got healed? Is that a praise no, request? No, no, that's, that's, a, that's a prayer request. That's a prayer request. So she yeah. needs a healing. She's got a lot okay. of side effects. Okay, maybe I read it wrong. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for that right now. Lord, we come before you in the name yes, of Jesus, so and we lift up Rachel, and I pray, God, that you'll heal her right now, just like you did for the woman that we prayed for yes, a few Father. years ago in Mexico. I prayed for a lady that had a tumor in her head and it went away. In the name of Jesus, do it for Rachel in as well. Jesus in Jesus' name, name. God. amen. In Jesus' amen. mighty name, hallelujah. We also, we're gonna be praying for Natalie uh, Gallardo. Her yes. husband, Robert, is sick. He's got blood clots. You know, also he suffers liver and also uh, he has diabetes. You know, and so we're going to pray. Yes. Listen, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We have many, many uh, recorded miracles. And I want to just God say this doing, as you're getting yes, ready. Go ahead. If you relate to any of these, any of these yes. requests, lay your hands on yourself right now. Yes. Because there's power in prayer. As we pray, we're praying for you too. Pastor, you know, just share, share with us about the person who got what you, you're praying. And, oh, yeah. and uh, somebody, you'll, you'll lay hands. Yeah. Through the, through the, through, through the, yeah, through, through the, the camera? camera, yes. Through the camera, yeah, we, I was preaching and I, by faith, I began to pray. There's someone getting healed right now. There's a lady getting healed. Yes. And I forgot exactly what the healing was, but I prayed and I said something specific. And then we got an email mm. the following week. Hey, I'm healed. Imagine that. We prayed that. for me. Got a, there was a lady in, in uh, was it uh, in Mexico? Mm. Uh, what's it called again, that place? Anyway, the pastor's wife, one of the pastor's wife, she told me at the last thing we had, she says a couple of years ago, you prayed for me, and it went away, and she had a tumor in her head. Wow. And she, I didn't know that No operation? No. Unbelievable. No operation. That's why I could pray with faith. We could pray yes. with faith, because yes. we see miracles almost every week. Yes, yes. Nothing, remember, I want to remind you that nothing is impossible to those who believe. Okay, let's pray for, for Robert, Natalie's husband. Father, in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus, we come before your precious Lord. And Father, we come against the powers of darkness. We come against this, um, this demonic force that is coming against yes, his Lord. body in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus. Take away the blood clots, my God. Take away these liver problems, Lord, whether it be hepatitis A, B, or C. In the yes. name of Jesus, be gone in Jesus' mighty name. Also, we bind and destroy the powers of diabetes. Be gone in the name of Jesus by the power yes. of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the stripes of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, be healed, Robert. In Jesus' name, we expect a miracle. We expect reports of healings. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And we're praying for Bonnie Carrasco for her liver. Her mm -hmm. swollen feet and much just swollen feet and much pain. We've also been praying for Hector Mayorga. Oh yes, with his, he just had an operation. The first mm -hmm. liver it didn't take, mm -hmm. and he was he looked like he was mm -hmm. gonna die, but miraculously he, they got him another liver, and right now it looks like he could recover. So we're gonna pray that he have a full recovery, yes. as well as praying yes. for Bonnie. Lord, we come before you. We pray for Hector Mayorga. Yes, Father. I pray that he would come out of this and, Jesus, and be able man. to stand again and walk again and have a longer life. We also pray for Bonnie. I pray you begin to heal that liver. In I, Jesus, I pray man. you begin to. Take away the swollen feet and the pain that she's feeling right now. In the name of Jesus, yes. we pray. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Now we're going to be praying for uh, Carlos Espinosa. His son actually uh, is bipolar. 
and it uses drugs and alcohol to numb the pain and to cope with a, you know, with a in chemical imbalance. But listen, we serve a God of miracles. If God can raise Lazarus from the dead, God can, God can heal your boy mm -hmm. from this bipolar situation. And we're, also, we're going to pray also for his mom and friend. Father, in the precious yes, and beautiful Father, name of Jesus, Jesus, we pray, Father, for Carlos Espinosa's son, in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus, we destroy the parts of darkness in Jesus' name. Yes, and this Lord. chemical balance called bipolar in the name of Jesus is not of God. And Father, we pray that you bring order to his mind, bring order to his emotions, yes. bring, bring, bring order to his life in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, Father, that even without no medicine, that he will completely heal in Jesus' mighty name. Do this to glorify your precious and beautiful name. And everybody say, amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Sonia De La Cruz's son. Uh, his name is Nicholas. Yes. He ran away from home about a year and a half ago. Now with toxic relationships, he's very abusive. He's a mm. PK. And yes. I know all about PKs. Wow. And when he went to Summer Impact, he just, we just want him back, they say. Mm. And we know what it is to be a prodigal son. I know what it is to be that person. And I know that many have come back, PKs come back, and we're going to pray for Nicholas right now. Lord, we come before you. We pray for Nicholas. He may be wayward right now yes. on the wrong track. Yes, Bring Father. him back home. Yes, Lord, Lord. use this oh, thing Father, to bring them back home. Man. Let him be so fearful for his soul yes, that he has, Lord. must come home and return to God. Yes, and Father. And return to his household. In the name of Jesus, we, we pray. We claim that done in Jesus' yes. mighty Jesus name. name. We need to hear yes. from you. Yes. When he comes home, yes. we need to hear testimony that he's back and I would be not be surprised if these young men start preaching the Bible, That's preaching right. the word of God. Yeah. He's going to remember this moment. Yes. This, yes. This was going to be, you know, we're going to have this in archives for the, for, for the Do you know that, you know, you, you can listen, you know, we're going to pray for, we you know, one more, but I want you to know that you can look, you can look at this, uh, at, at these programs via Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or victoryourishinternational.org. Listen, get involved and tell people to, to, to look at what's happening here because it's going to pump their faith and miracles are going to happen even after, you know, this Wednesday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know, we're going to be praying. Something exciting is happening. I know Mama Julie is excited. Papa Sonny is excited about this Saturday. What's going to happen this Saturday, Pastor Sonny? We're going to be surrounding City Hall. Uh, first responder places like mm -hmm. the police departments, also the fire department. We got permission to do it in city, uh, LA yes. city hall, but also in Chino we're doing it, yes. in different cities we're mm -hmm. doing it. We're gonna surround hospitals. Also even Albertsons are letting us surround yes. them because they're, they're there in yes. contact with people. Yes. So we're gonna be all over the place praying collectively yes. in victory yes. outreach I believe in this nation, maybe other nations too. I'm yes, not sure. Yes, other nations yes. as well. All, every, around, the all world. around the world. I run the world. From eight, or nine to ten mm. Pacific Standard Time. So whatever that time is around the world, I don't know what they're doing. But yes, that's gonna be powerful. You yes. Pray? So they, they, they're gonna be they're gonna doing the same thing in their morning, same day, but in their morning, and uh, you know, cause we, you know we're in the Philippines and we're in Australia, we're all over the place, you know, mm. and and we thank God for that. But can you imagine people praying? In, in Havana, mm -hmm. Cuba. Mm. Can you awesome. imagine? You know, I mean, God is going to move supernaturally. And listen, we want everybody to just get out. We have permission. <laughs> and make sure you get permission also from your uh, local officials. We got permission from our local officials. And we're going to surround the whole entire city hall. The whole, and then we're going to surround the, the police department and all that. But we're going to keep the distance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're going to be obeying. And we have been obeying. Obeying the CDC uh, uh, ordinance, you know we have to maintain a distance. And but let's pray that God somehow supernaturally uh, minister to our, our officials, minister to those of them, you know, that are first responders and those of them that are being victims because of this coronavirus. Yes, in Jesus. Name. Let's pray, Father. Yes, Lord. We love you. We praise you. First of all, I just want to thank you for Mama Julie and yes, pa God. Pa Pastor Sunny. We thank you, Father, for their their insight and, and, and the innovation in the spirit, how, yes, Lord. how they declare war and they cause us to go to war against these powers of darkness, this unseen enemy that we yes. have called coronavirus. In the precious and beautiful name of Jesus, we pray for our first responders, God, and we pray for this Saturday 
We pray that everybody will get excited yes, around Lord. the world, oh God, and they will go to the local setting yes. with the permission. In the name of Jesus. And, and, and uh, obeying CDC uh, ordinance around the world. And yes. Father, we are claiming the destruction, the coronavirus in Jesus' mighty Jesus name. name. We claim yes. healing for those of them that have caught it. And we claim, Father, recovery yes, of those Lord. of them, Father, little God, that, that are going through it in Jesus' mighty yes, name. Lord, we name declare Jesus. war against the parts of the devil. Devil, we bind you and destroy your powers in Jesus' name. Jesus made an open spectacle of you in Jesus' name. And God has given us the power yeah. and the authority come against you in Jesus' right. mighty name. Yes, Lord. So we bind and destroy the powers of this virus in Jesus' name. name and Jesus. we declare victory, victory already, victory on Saturday in Jesus' mighty name. We yes, love you. Lord. We praise you praise in the you, precious Lord. and beautiful name of Jesus. Well, Pastor Sonny, our time went fast. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can just look into, uh, into a camera and talk to our viewers for a, li for a little sure. bit. And then in case somebody also needs to get saved, you never know. Yeah. There could be somebody there that just I, ready I, to get saved. I see that there's some family turmoil going on in some places, marital issues happening. Mm. I see that there's conflict at home. Uh, some people are probably uh, having some uh, violence. Yes. We're going to break that by yes. the Spirit. God wants to mm. protect you right now. He wants to bring also provision for you. I just I got a text the other day from one of our married couples, and the woman had to, uh, filed for divorce. Mm. And that day I got the text. It was about two weeks after. He said, it's off. The divorce is off. We made up. Thank you for your wow. prayers. God is a God the power prayer. Power of prayer. So God wants to put wow. your relationship back together, mm. your marriage back together, your kids to start acting right. So God wants to take care of your household. God wants to take care of your body. Yes. God wants to take care of your finances. God wants to take you. He wants to give you faith over yes. fear and peace over panic. So I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to pray over your household. Yes. covering over your family. Yes. You don't have to be in fear right now. Even the stories I told, I wasn't trying to be a fear monger. I was trying to let you know the mm -hmm. power of prayer. Yes. That God is able to overcome it through yes. prayer. And right now we're going to take fear out of you right now through the power of prayer. We're going to pray for the sick mm. right now. If you're sick in body, but most of all, the most important prayer is the prayer of salvation. Yes. So I'm going to start with praying for your deliverance, to pray for your protection, to mm -hmm. pray for your provision, pray for your household. Then we'll pray for salvation in just yes. a moment. So lift your hands with us. Lord, I pray right now for that yes, family Lord. that's struggling. I pray yes, for that Father. family that maybe they have inward fighting going on. I yes, pray that Lord. you bring peace to that home. Yes, also, Lord. God, those that are struggling financially, jobless, they don't, they don't have finances. I pray that they won't panic and fear, but they would instead replace it with peace and Bless faith you, and that you would provide for them supernaturally, yes, God. Lord. Bring stuff to their house. Bring groceries to them. In Lord, Jesus I name. pray that we'll have the spirit of liberality In right Jesus now name. to continue to give out rather than just receive. We want to give out to others. Yes, help our brothers. Help our sisters. I pray, God, for, the, for those uh, the people that have sickness in their body. Yes, I pray Lord. that they lay their hands upon themselves oh, right God, now for name. cancer yes, to go, Lord. heart disease disease to go, yes, arthritis Lord. to go, yes, Lord. Uh, feet issues to go, in back Jesus problems name. to go. I pray right now for, for miracles to take in place. Jesus Open name. up spiritual blind eyes, in Jesus God, name. and deliver people from Lord alcohol, Lord. drugs, or any other vice. In, Jesus in the name, name of Jesus, we pray. In oh, the name of Jesus. hallelujah. I can, I can oh, sense God. that Save God is healing people. Yes, Lord. I can sense people. Mm. Again, healed by the power of God. Right I can now. sense people that have heart problems yes, who can right heal. Now. Name of Jesus. Some of you have been had these blood problems for a long mm. time. God is healing you as well. We yes. need to know about this. Please. Yes. You can go to a Victory Outreach International, the app, and let us know. Let us please let us know. You know that God is doing something. God did, and also, also you can also send us your needs as well. Praise God. Well, can can we say uh, the sin? I, I want I want prayer. people to get saved. Yeah. I know there's somebody. Listen, there's some of you that you're watching. And you're sitting maybe because mom asked you to do, or maybe your father, maybe your husband or your wife. But this is your day. Yes. This is your day. You say this prayer with all your heart, and immediately God is going to raise all your sins. And if you were to die now, you go straight to heaven. Mm -hmm. Not because you're good, but because God is good. Yeah, his grace is, his grace yes. is good. Yes, yes. And some of you just tuned in right now. You tuned mm -hmm. in right on time. Jesus wants to save your soul. Yes. Say after me. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and 
begin to cleanse me from all my yes, sins Lord. right now. And Lord, we know you rose again. Yes, Father. And that you live today. I pray that you'll come into my heart. Yes, Lord. And save my soul and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. If you Hallelujah. said that prayer, you type it in, comment. We want to continue to pray for you. Get plugged into Hallelujah. a church. Get plugged into Victory Outreach. Yes, the Bible says when one person repents and comes to Christ, all of heaven mm -hmm. rejoices. So we want yeah. to rejoice. Hallelujah. And we want to thank God yes. that you gave Jesus a chance. Praise the Lord, Beautiful. Will. We thank you so much again for being here with us. God is so good. And I want you to know that next week, listen, next week we're going to have Mama Julie in the upper room and also Sister Doreen. And we're going to recap on the things that are going to happen this Saturday. So please tell somebody, amen, that next, next Wednesday at 1230, Mama Julie, our founder's wife, and Sister Doreen are going to be with us. And we're going to be sharing. We're not praying. We're going to be praying. We're going to be believing God for miracles. But we're also going to hear what happened on Saturday around the world. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. May God bless you. And again, continue to pray, believe God for miracles, because he is a God of miracles and wonders. God bless you. Victory Hours family, we're excited because our founders have given us a call to United Global Prayer around the world. We're going to go outside of our buildings and we're going to go pray for our government and our first responders. We're going to go in front of the city halls, in front of a police uh, stations, and we're going to be going in front of our, our hospitals and we're going to pray for those of them that pay the price. Listen, we need everybody to get together. You know, we are going to be obedient to the CDC ordinance. We're going to put a mask on. You know, we're going to uh, practice distancing. And if you need any information whatsoever, you can call your pastor or your regional pastor. Listen, it's going to be May the 9th at 9 o'clock in the morning, Pacific time. Exciting times and revival is going to take place eventually because we're all praying together. God bless you. And I'll see you May the 9th. Thank you for tuning in today to our live broadcast. You too can also be part of giving right there where you're at. Whether you're watching at home or on the go. Simply by clicking on the link in the description below or through our Victory Outreach International app. Let's take a look at how easy it is to give. Generosity made simple. Text VOI to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International. Get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected. If you say we will